Three-wheeled vehicles were introduced in the 1990s as exotic concept vehicles. This one is like a motorcycle on steroids. It has what's called a reverse trike design, two wheels in front and one in the back. It hugs the road like a race car, yet is legal to drive through city streets. This vehicle goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.1 seconds. No faster than a motorcycle, but it definitely turns heads. Production begins with 34 steel tube components that will form the vehicle's chassis. A worker places them in an assembly jig. This positions the tubes for welding. After clamping the components in place, it takes the worker about four hours to weld 68 different areas together. For efficiency, 13 of the larger, more complex structures are pre-assembled. The steel tubes measure 3.8 centimeters in diameter, but the metal itself is only one and a half millimeters thick. They're like those used in the aviation industry, strong yet lightweight. This company uses a visual reference method to assemble smaller parts of the vehicle. Before starting, a worker places 80 components on a board with labels that identify them. This way, he's certain he won't forget any nuts, bolts, bearings, brackets, or horns. Using an electric crane, a worker hoists the vehicle's four-cylinder, 152-horsepower, 1,200cc motorcycle engine into the chassis, now tinted black. Using a pneumatic wrench, he attaches it with six bolts and six nuts. Here, a worker assembles the 50 parts that make up what's called the foot box. This includes aluminum clutch, brake, and gas pedals. The brake pedal is thicker to withstand more aggressive use. The vehicle decelerates from 100 kilometers an hour to zero in just less than 29 meters. He coats part of the brake pedal with a liquid sealant so vibrations won't loosen it. Another worker then mounts two output hoses and two plastic reservoirs for brake fluid. The brake fluid must withstand heat of 343 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees hotter than what's required for most cars. This enables better engine performance. He installs the foot box onto the front of the chassis using three bolts. Controlling the speed with the foot box is crucial since top speed for the vehicle is 230 kilometers an hour. Next, he installs part of the suspension system, a cylindrical gas shock absorber. This attaches to the brake system, which is a zinc-plated rotor and an aluminum caliper. Then they attach what's called the 4-into-1 exhaust manifold. The four pipes merge into one to vent the exhaust fumes from the engine. They install the electric fan and radiator assembly. Next, a worker attaches a removable leather-covered aluminum driving wheel to the steering column. The driving wheel locks into place with a spring-loaded latch system. Just like a race car, you attach the steering wheel after you sit in the driver's seat so that you can get inside the vehicle. The collapsible steering column is part of the instrument cluster. This includes dials showing the vehicle's speed, mileage and fuel. There are also switches for turning signals, hazard flashers, high and low beam lights and to start and kill the engine. Next, workers install the rear wheel to another part of the suspension, called a swing arm. They attach it with one bolt that's nearly half a meter long and two smaller bolts. Workers then install a chain on the rear wheel assembly. When the vehicle's running, the chain's 94 links revolve on two sprockets to make the wheel turn. Rubber O-rings on each link prevent dust from damaging the chain. Finally, workers attach 19 molded fiberglass body parts. This factory offers six standard colors and several custom colors. When assembled, the vehicle is nearly three and a half meters long, almost two meters wide, and just over a meter high. If you have a motorcycle license, and a spare $50,000, you too can burn the pavement on this mean set of wheels.